Hello everyone and welcome back to See the Stories. This is the signature segment of the three-hour news show on See Today. Now let me start this segment by asking you both a question. Do you have any um, childhood dream job? Pro basketball player. <laughs> I had that one all locked and loaded, didn't I? <laughs> How about you? In a, in a single hot video, would you actually answer that? For me, you know, I have some, some changing oh, you know, okay. moments. So what was your first Dream job. You remember? Marine biology. Really? Wow. Yes. That's a heavy one. That's why I like, I love water so much. Mm. Right. So like uh, I, I I'm so intrigued by all the fish Marine and stuff. Animals. Yeah. How about you? I wanted to be a vet. Oh. You vet? Yeah, vet. You a vet? Yes. Really? Why? I love animals. Oh. oh. <laughs> We're gonna. We're going to find out how much she loves animals because an animal <laughs> trainer named Shandor Lorenti works at a lion and safari park in South Africa and his daily activities include engaging with wild animals. Shandor Lorenti is a 28-year-old animal trainer who works at a lion and safari park in South Africa. His love for animals goes back to when he was a child. Lorenti has lived in the park since he was just a young boy. And in September of 2013, Laurenti started posting photos of his wild animals on Instagram. He then moved on to making video content when he, where he started posting videos on TikTok back in October of 2020. A video of himself with a cheetah instantly went viral and garnered 900,000 views. His TikTok account with 9.6 million followers and 103 million likes features some of the cutest videos in which he kisses and hugs the safari park's animals. Well, I'm good with giraffe and all, but not with a carnivore. And the animals have been named George the Lion, Cindy the Cheetah, and Sky the Giraffe. Oh, I can deal with this one. <laughs> right. I love animals, but not this kind of animal. Like what animals? Pets. <laughs> the smaller ones, the smaller yeah. ones. The cute ones. Yeah. Well, yeah, these guys are cute as well, I think. And, uh, I, you know, we want to get to know them a little bit more. Mm. So we are now actually connected with Shandor Laurenti live from South Africa. Hi there, Shandor. Thank you for joining us today. Hey, guys. Thank you so much for having me on the show today. Oh, it's great to have you as well. Very fascinating, by the way. Uh, we have lots of questions. We have so many questions. Um, let's start by the videos that we mentioned that you had gone viral with on TikTok already watched by around 70.4 million wow. different views, 9.7 million likes. In one of your videos, you actually swing your camera to the lion that is sitting right next to you. So can you tell us about that video in particular? And in general, how do you have such a good rapport with these animals for these videos? Like They obviously love to be on your uh, content. So let me start off by saying I didn't wake up one day and just say, hey, I want to, you know, play with wild animals. This is something <laughs> I've, I've grown up doing. Okay. Um, and yeah, this is actually my 16th year here at the park. So I'm very privileged to be surrounded by such incredible animals that I call my animal family. Wow. And the content, you know, it's, it's nothing difficult. I, I really just like swing the camera around. Uh, show off the animals and people absolutely love it um, and that video specifically um, when I posted it it was actually one of my lowest performing videos and about a week or two later within a space of two hours it had a million views um, oh. and it just started climbing Ah, yeah. The algorithm yeah. likes you. I really pay the attention when you show animals on videos. There's actually, right. you know, more traffic and more engagement. Yeah. But um, where about are you in South Africa again? Which, which city? So I'm based just outside of Johannesburg in South Africa. Okay, so um, in, in Johannesburg, south of Johannesburg, and, but when did you start your job um, in the safari? So like I said, in my 16th year here at the park, uh, I'm very fortunate that family has done. So my dad is an animal behaviorist, Mm. And his mom actually did the same thing before him. So mm. I'm third generation to kind of continue the family legacy. Who runs in the family? I was going to ask him about the background. I mean, <laughs> why did you choose this in the, in the first place? I mean, your job is very high risk, yeah. right? Yeah, I could say I that. mean, you, you're dealing with carnivores every day. Um, what made you finally choose this job? 
And did you go through a special uh, like training or formal education, learning about the wildlife, about the um, animals, in order for you to be safe in doing that job? Most definitely. So, you know, this job, like many other jobs around the world, come, you know, it comes with a risk. Um, and it's about being a professional in this field. Um, my, my background is in animal behavior. And, mm. you know, it's about understanding the animals. And I remember as a kid watching my dad when I used to go to work with him, <laughs> uh, working with the same kind of animals and seeing the love that they showed him. Um, it made me really, really want to, you know, carry on the family legacy. And, and that's pretty much how, how it started. And it's really about understanding the individual animal. They all have different personalities. Mm -hmm. So it's about understanding what they like, what they don't like, and respecting that. Um, they'll always tell you when they don't want to come say hello, if they're having a bad day, Aww. just like we do. We don't always have the best day. It's exactly the same with them. Mm. Okay, so I'm curious. Let's, so let's take, take us back to the process of you uh, forming a bond in a relationship with an animal. How long does it generally take for you to get, or for the animals to get comfortable with you and vice versa? And what is the process like when you first get to know an animal and for you to decide this, we click, we have chemistry here. Is that part of the equation as well? And how do you maintain these relationships that you have formed? Because obviously they trust you and you trust them enough to love being around each other so much. Most definitely, everything is based on trust and building the relationships is, it's the one reason I love what I do is it's, you, you never have the same situation. Mm. Um, with each animal being so different and having their individual personality, you never know what it's gonna take to, to build the trust of that, that animal. A lot of the animals you see in my TikTok videos um, are animals that I've grown up with. Mm. Um, I was quite young when I started working with them. Um, <laughs> But yeah, it's, it's something that happens over many, many years. And working with so many different animals, the one thing I can say is you never know everything. Um, animals will always pull that white rabbit out the hat and say, hey, I bet you didn't know this, and they'll catch you <laughs> with God. So you always have to be very, very aware of what's happening and um, you know, always make sure you're, you're analyzing the animal and the behavior. Right. Okay, so it seems like you are very enjoying um, your days with with the wild animals so how many anim uh, wild animals are close with you again you have george cindy uh sky, sky right yeah. and um are there others there's chowter and sangha the leopard um there's a lot of animals that i i don't show too much on on TikTok that mm -hmm. i work with like the african wild dogs mm -hmm. there's stinky the hyena which um She's one of my favorites. She's about 13 years old now. She was one of the first animals I started working with. Um, but yeah, I work with um, over 80 different animals here Whoa. on the reserve. So the family is really, really big. All right, oh. so 80 different animals. Um, what is this actually uh, the fact that we, um, the, the commoners, as I might say, <laughs> uh, don't know about these animals that is, um, uh, you know, misunderstood? I, th I think there's so many things that people tend to misunderstand about these animals. I think the first thing is, is you know, when people look at an animal like a lion, for example, they'll think that all lions are exactly the same, and it's it's not the case at all. Um, like I said, each animal is so different, uh, different, and they have such intricate personalities. Um, I think that, firstly, is the the first thing. And then there's animals like the spotted hyena, which I think from from movies from our childhood, you know, they've gotten such a bad rap, but they're so intelligent. They're such emotive animals. They'll cry when they're sad. Aww. They'll smile when they're happy. Yeah, um, and they're so, so, so clever. Yeah, and I think uh, animals sometimes get a bad rep thanks to Hollywood as well. Yeah. We're always classifying exactly. certain animals as the bad guys. And I think it is. It, it, we, it, we always say it's wrong to stereotype people. Yeah. But yeah. we do it with animals all the time, right? <laughs> like we're always saying, oh, it's all lions. They Just because they, they can't really voice their objection. Yeah. So yeah. Um, I'm curious as well. Is there, are there animals that you've tried 
forming a, a bond or a relationship with, but it's, it gets difficult or the animal puts up resistance. And what do you do in that case? I mean, do you just say, okay, it's, this one's really tough. I, I can't build a relationship with them and move on. Mm -hmm. Or do you continually try to break down those barriers? And what is the most challenging animal for you to form a relationship with? Can I say people for this answer? Oh, good answer. Good answer. I love it. Yes, people are very good. No, I'm <laughs> so I think for me, one of uh, I've worked with so many different animals. The one animal, and it's an animal that people don't really know about. It's an animal called an aardvark. It's actually a member of the hyena family. Okay. They they're quite small. They look really pretty from a distance, but I've just never had good experiences with them. I tend to find the smaller the animal, um, the more aggressive they can be. Um, and art wolves, in, in my experience, mm. I've just never had the greatest, greatest luck with. You ah. know, this goes for any animal that you, you work with. Mm -hmm. you, you know, you can try your best to build a relationship, but it really has to be up to the animal whether they want to you know, reciprocate that uh -huh. relationship. And if they don't want to, don't force them. It's it's not, uh, you know, it has to, to come from both sides. It's right. not something you can you can force upon them. Uh, yes. It I has to be a mutual you, relationship. You know what, I'm, so, I'm so curious. Uh, usually, uh, Shandor uh, makes videos with animals that he is close, already close mm -hmm. with, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you and the animal has built this trust so you can you know, cuddle, you can cuddle and, in no, those videos. Rolling but over. What do you do when you uh, meet, let's say, with uh, wild animals which you never met before? Do you just um, observe from afar or do you try to interact with them? And my next question, uh, which relates to this one. If we ever encounter a carnivore, let's say, in the wildlife, when we're hiking or I don't know, when we're going somewhere, what do we have to do? Because our first reaction would be, you know, we just run, run. Because, we're, because we're scared. Yes. What, what do we have to do? So, you know, the anim like I said, the animals that I work with, I've built a relationship with over many, many years. Mm -hmm. I understand them and their personalities. So if I don't know the animal, I'm not going to interact with it. Oh, um, and especially okay. in a in a true wild setting, yeah. you know, respect their space. Okay. Um, we, we as humans, I think, tend to encroach on animals quite a lot. And it's something that, you know, we need to respect. Uh, animals often reciprocate with an uh, aggressive action when they're uncomfortable. Um, and in the case of a, an animal in the wild, the closer you start getting, the more angry they're going to get and you're going to get that reaction that you don't want. So if you were to ever come across an animal in the wild, mm -hmm. Stay still, remain calm, um, don't run. That, don't that's run. the best thing. Don't you know, run. Just slowly start, don't run. <laughs> just slowly okay. start backing off. Oh. With an animal like a lion, for example, the minute you run, it triggers that predatory, uh, predatory response. Oh. The minute you run, they are going to chase you. So okay. best thing to do is remain calm um, and stay still until wow. it, it wow. heads off in a different direction. I will wet you know, my I think pens this is, a, this is a thing that we need to highlight because usually when people see Ishandor's video, they become inspired and like, oh, oh maybe... Oh, let me go hug a lion. Yes, exactly. <laughs> well, the thing is, I mean, he is an expert in animal behaviors. Course, he and understands. It's taken a long time. Well. Exactly. So I think people should know this yeah. that he's built a relationship over the years. Yeah. And also, please know that, and correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. animals are trying to avoid you as well. It's not yeah. like they want to come up there and confront you either. Who right? they, Shanda? Th that's exactly right. Firstly, let me say to all the viewers please don't try this at home. Um, <laughs> I don't recommend it. <laughs> but that's exactly right. Animals will always try and stay away from people. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, like I said, the closer you encroach on an animal's habitat, on their, their space, the, the area that they're comfortable with, uh -huh. the more aggressive the action is going to be. Okay. So, uh, probably last question. Um, <laughs> you, you, were, you were about to uh, <coughs> tell us how difficult it is with, with people. <laughs> but um, um, on, the other, uh, on the other hand, um, it, I heard about you also being rescued by George the Lion from an attack. Is that true? That, that is actually correct. So tell us more, tell us more. When you see the 
particular for George in that area. Um, they have a really big area that they roam around in, but there's about seven other lions in the pride with him. So there's quite a few personalities that I have to contend with. And one of George's sons, um, one of the younger lions, I was quite far from a vehicle and one day he gave me this look and he, there's two types of growls. There's a growl when they want some food or they want some attention. And then there's a growl that, okay, today's not a good day. I'm going to come get you. Oh. And that was a, I'm going to come get you growl. Mm. And I was really far away from a vehicle and I was, hey, this is it. And out of the blue, the lioness from the right from the side grabbed him and stopped him from coming to me. And George came running from behind me, knocked me to the side um, and actually stopped him, giving me enough time to actually get back to the vehicle and to safety. And I always used to say when people asked, like, would they protect you? I always used to say that incident happened. I was like, okay, I think I have a little bit of a place in this pride. Wow. Wait, so it, not only did his instinct kind of kick in to help you or rescue you, but he even formed a strategy, basically giving you enough time knowing that you had to make your way back to the vehicle. This is next level wow. stuff. Wow. <laughs> It was a crazy experience and like all of this happened in a space of like 45 seconds. So, wow. you know, mm. it's a really short period, but in that moment, it felt like the longest time. Like that, that vehicle was so far away. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm very fortunate George, George and the rest of the Pride were there to, to help me out. Yeah. I thought it only happened in Idris Elba's movie, but <laughs> actually it happened uh, to Shanda. <laughs> So, wow. Yeah. By the way, uh, too bad you didn't get that on video. Otherwise, I would guarantee <laughs> one million views. Anyway, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to chat with us halfway yeah. across the world, Shander. Thank you so much, Shander. Uh, please also say hello to George. Thank you guys Sky so much for having me. Cindy as well. Yeah. Looking forward to more videos. I will do. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Good afternoon.